Good afternoon and welcome to another Facebook Live from the New England Aquarium with educators Nick, Taylor, who's over in the corner here, <laughs> and there's another familiar face with us that I'll introduce in just a second here. We'll add a little bit of mystery to this. We are coming to you from behind the scenes in our West Wing area, which is a very shark and stingray focused area. It's also an area that some of, our, some of you fans uh, of our virtual visits may recognize from previous videos as well. During those earlier videos, we were joined, as we are today, by interactive exhibits aquarist, Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Great to have you here. So aside from being a top-notch supervisor, Sarah is also the manager of our shark and stingray rearing program. And that's why we are here today. We wanted to catch up with Sarah to talk about some recently born stingray pups that some of you may have seen photos of on our social feeds last month. Now this is not an everyday happening here at the aquarium, but it's also an opportunity to rave about Sarah's animal care skills <laughs> and talk a little bit more about that rearing program as well. So Sarah, how would you feel about us politely peppering you with some questions. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's go, let's have uh, Taylor start us off today. Awesome, so I think it probably makes sense to start off talking about our Blue Spotted Mask Ray rearing program in general. So can you tell us a little bit about how that works? Sure, so up in our Shark and Ray touch tank, we have two adult females of this species. And we also have one adult male that actually lives in this tank over here behind the scenes. And once we identify that we have enough time, enough space, and enough resources, we can put the males and females together and let them breed with each other and create some offspring. Awesome. So that is exactly what happened a few months ago at this point, and it resulted in some successful stingray births. Um, in fact, I believe we had two females that were carrying pups. That's really cool. And that is what you're seeing right here in this tank. While Marissa gets you guys a close view of these cuties, Sarah, can you tell us some details about these stingray pups that our viewers are now seeing? Sure, so last summer in 2020, we put our males and females together um, and both of our females ended up getting pregnant. And this past January, they both gave birth to these cute little stingray pups. So we had one of our females give birth to three and one just gave birth to one so they can they can have a number of different pups per litter that's really cool is there a typical number of rays per litter for this species for this species it's one to three one and to that three. can yeah can <laughs> vary per species very cool now sarah can you tell us when the last time it was that we had blue spotted mass ray pups here four years ago in 2017 four years ago. So this is actually pretty exciting stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, over to me here. As you guys are again seeing some great images of our blue spotted mask gray pups. <laughs> okay, Sarah, so these pups have been alive for a little bit now. Um, you probably have uh, a very specific plan in mind for how to care for these pups. Um, how long do you expect that you'll keep them behind the scenes? Probably for about a year to 18 months. Okay. Is that, would you say that's like average to reach uh, like the next phase of their life? Like maybe a, like sub-adult or adulthood? Um, that will be when they're big enough to go somewhere else. So at that time, they'll hopefully be big enough to go into our Shark and Ray touch tank. Ah, okay. So that was going to be my, my second question. That's the plan right now is to move them upstairs. Yep. So we have um, two females and two males in this litter here. And so once they get big enough, our two female pups will go into the touch tank with their moms and the males we will probably send to other aquariums. Very cool, that's awesome. And for those of you guys that have visited the aquarium in the past or even recently, you may recognize the uh, adult form of these pups from the shark and ray tank as well. Very cool. Okay, Taylor, your turn. <laughs> so we hinted at this a little bit, Sarah, but can you explain to our viewers why we're so excited about these ray pups? Why are they important for both our institution and also conservation in general? Sure, so this is really exciting because breeding these animals allows us to be self-sufficient 
and to provide animals for our exhibits on our own versus taking them from the wild. Um, and not only can we provide animals to ourselves, but we can also provide them to other aquariums as well. Awesome. So this means less individuals coming from the wild, but still having that opportunity for these animals to act as ambassadors for their wild counterparts so that our visitors can come and see them and appreciate them and then hopefully want to do something to help protect sharks and rays in the wild. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. Um, well, I think at this point we're going to open up the, the floor to some... Oh, Nick has another question. I got more questions, uh, Taylor. Nick, I'm so sorry. Yeah, Nick. yeah. That's okay. <laughs> so we asked Sarah all these hard questions. I wanted to give her a couple oh, of easier questions nice too. Yeah, a chance to <laughs> a chance to talk a little bit more about your connection with these pups. Um, can you tell us what your favorite thing is about raising these particular blue spotted uh, pups? Yeah, my favorite thing is probably being able to success successfully raise them to the point where they can go somewhere else, whether it's in the shark and ray touch tank or to another aquarium. Um, just getting them through all that because they can be. Um, a lot of work sometimes and so it's really gratifying to get them there. I think it's interesting that you mention that because that's one of the things that our visitors don't always get a chance to view is all that hard work that goes on behind the scenes to potentially raise an animal to sort of the next step in its, its life history. Um, to the visitors, maybe they're just seeing a new animal on exhibit and they don't realize that there was a lot of work and care that went into things beforehand. So to kind of build off that, what would you say is the hardest thing? about caring for these pups? Probably raising them to the point where they can go where they need to go. So it's my favorite and it's the hardest because like I said, it can take a lot of work. Sometimes it takes a lot of trial with different foods to get them eating, to find what they like, to get them growing at the right rate. Um, so it's a lot of work, but it's also really satisfying when, you, when you're successful. That's great. Okay. So we teased you a second ago. We did. It's my fault. That's I'm okay. Sorry. No, <laughs> that's all right. So now is the time where you visitors and viewers rather uh, can start to post some questions on our uh, Facebook page in the comments. If you're interested, go ahead and post them. And uh, our assistant who is filming right now will try to read off some of those questions and hopefully we'll be able to answer them, especially with Sarah's help as well. Do the baby rays have stingers? That's a great question. Yeah, they do. They're born with their stinging barbs from day one. Very cool. Is that so, to, Oh, go ahead, Taylor. Okay. Yeah, no, I think that is actually one of my favorite things about these rays is we get to see kind of what that barb looks like. Um, Sarah, could you maybe explain to our viewers why they're not going to see barbs in the shark and ray touch tank? Sure, so in the touch tank, um, usually that's open for touching so visitors can come in and interact with the animals. So we clip their barbs so that it's as safe as possible for people to do that. Um, but down here, these little pups still have their barbs. And um, in the wild, that would be so from day one, they can protect themselves from predators. Awesome. So yeah, as Sarah just mentioned, we will trim the barbs of our adult rays in our touch tank. This is a process really similar to trimming your fingernails or your toenails. Um, and actually we use a tool that's pretty similar to the tool that you use to trim a dog or a cat's toenails with uh, to trim that barb. But with these little guys, they're not being handled. Uh, they don't have hands in the water with them on a regular basis. So we don't need to worry about trimming the barb. And if you look really carefully along the middle of their tail, kind of just before it phases into white and black, that's where you'll you'll notice that barb. So um, they're really hard to see on these little guys, but if you look really carefully, you might be able to catch a glimpse of the barbs. Great question to start us off. Do we have any other questions? What do they eat? What do our sting baby stingrays eat, Sarah? They get a very varied diet of little tiny pieces of shrimp, clam, squid, and once they get a little older, I'll also start giving them some fish as well. So pretty similar to their parents. Yep, just much smaller pieces. <laughs> Do they have uh, preferences that you notice? Are there some that like one of those food items more than, than maybe some Sometimes of the other ones? Sometimes they do. This is a really um, great litter of pups. They've been really cooperative in eating uh, mostly whatever I give them, but sometimes they can be really picky too. <laughs> I, can, I can relate to that, absolutely, yeah. Okay, any other questions, Marissa? 
How oh. long is the gestation period for a blue spotted masquerade? Um, somewhere between four and six months. And the reason I don't know exactly how long it is is because we put our males and females together for a little while to give them time. And so somewhere between four and six months, they'll give birth. Very right cool. On. Yeah, and I, I, I feel like we all know what that word means, Taylor, but maybe I'll just mention that gestation essentially refers to the time between the mom getting pregnant and the pup actually coming out, uh, being born. So, yeah. Very cool. So they don't need air. Um, so they have their gills to breathe through the water, um, but that's just sort of a, an exploration behavior where they're just moving around, checking everything out, swimming around the tank, looking for food, interacting with each other. If I had to guess, that might be the spot where you stand to feed these rays. And yep. they don't typically have the top of the tank open. And actually, Marissa can maybe get a good shot of this. So this mesh netting that you're seeing in the back of the tank right here is also typically in the front of the tank as well. We've just removed it for this presentation. Uh, Sarah wanted to make sure that all of our viewers could get a really great view at these pups today. Um, so that is a junk barrier is what we call those in the trade. Um, and so typically when that jump barrier comes off, it either means Sarah is taking a look at them, they're getting a checkup, or it's time to eat. So that little Ray is probably just as curious about what we're doing up here as we are about what it's doing underneath the water today. We have another question for from our viewers, Marissa. How long do they live? How long do these rays live? That is a good question that I would like to know the answer to as well. <laughs> um, so it's really hard to know how long these guys can live, especially when we're studying animals in the wild. Um, but a good guess would be somewhere from 10 to 20 years. Sarah, can you maybe explain a little bit to our viewers that might not understand why it's such a challenge to know how old these animals are? Sure, so we can know how old the animals are that we have here, but these guys, these little pups are only two months old, so it'll take a long time for me to see how old they can grow to. Um, and if we were to have an animal, say, from another aquarium or from the wild, um, it's not always that easy to determine when it was born and how old it is currently. Great point, Sarah. So there isn't anything on their body that can indicate age. You can't just look at a ray and know, oh, that ray is 23 years old. It's kind of like humans. And I would actually argue that probably rays have even less indicators on their bodies than humans do to tell us how old they are. So especially when studying wild animals, unless you can track that animal for its entire life, there's just really no way to know. So that's actually another really cool part of this rearing program is that these animals can help us clue in to some answers about their wild counterparts, including their lifespan. That actually reminds me of um, an animal that we've had here at the aquarium before, and I don't want to get too off topic, but we've had a goosefish here at the aquarium before. And you might know a little bit more about this than I do, but I feel like we actually learned a little bit about goose, goosefish reproduction during the time that we had that animal in our care. And it actually has helped to set up conservation measures for goosefish in the wild. Um, and so I think that's, that's a cool thing too to think about is that as you're learning about these animals, a lot of times that information can be applied to wild populations as yeah, well. For yeah, sure. They have, they've definitely grown. So it takes them um, a couple weeks before they start to grow, um, but they've definitely gained weight since being born. Have they gotten bigger in diameter as well? Yes, yep, yep. <laughs> um, I love to call baby rays little danger raviolis because <laughs> I always think they look like the size of a ravioli when they're born. But as you can see, these guys are probably almost uh, the size of my hand or Nick's hand or even a little bit bigger, especially the pup that uh, was a solo pup, I think you mentioned, came out even a little bit bigger than the pups that were born in the, the triplets. Um, cool. Sarah, how do you know that they've gained weight? Um, because I weigh them regularly. So 
I start off weighing them um, very frequently when they're first born just to make sure they're heading in the right direction and then um, as they get older I'll, I'll start handling them less frequently and just you know checking in make sure that they're they're on the right path. Very cool. Do we have any other questions? People love danger ravioli. Danger yeah. ravioli. <laughs> Fantastic. Those were some really great questions this afternoon. And Sarah, thank you so much for helping us answer those questions. There's no one to hear it better from than our aquarists. They are truly the experts in these animals. If you had a question pop into your mind or you're not watching this live and you have a question about our baby rays, feel free to put those in the comments as well and we will do our best to answer them after this presentation is over. Well, Sarah, I have some good news for you. You are officially out of the hot seat. Woo! <laughs> and I do want to just say thank you again for giving us a peek behind the curtain here, giving us an update on these incredibly adorable stingray pups. Um, also, thank you for the incredible care that you put into all of the animals here at the New England Aquarium. Um, we truly would not have this place without the hard work of our aquarists and all the love and care they put into our animals. And as we mentioned earlier, this work directly contributes to shark and ray conservation. Again, the more of these animals that we can raise here at the New England Aquarium and at our sister institutions, the fewer come out of the wild. This is really important for sharks and rays because they face a number of human-made threats, including over-harvesting and climate change in the wild. And if you want to learn about how you can help out sharks and rays, Check out our website for resources specifically about overfishing and climate change. Also consider supporting institutions like us that are doing work like Sarah just described for us today, raising animals in human care in order to help share the stories of their wild counterparts. And thank you all to our viewers for tuning in this afternoon, learning a little bit more about the hard work that goes into taking care of baby rays here at the New England Aquarium and check back in soon for some more virtual content. Thanks friends, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. See ya. Bye Danger Ravioli. <laughs>